Now, we know that Hamish Dodd for DIY. We know him for DIY. He does a very good job of DIY. Get yeah. a man, and he always says, and interior design. But he is also a registered landscape designer and a horticulturalist as well. And he wanted to share what inspired him to study and follow this career path. Hi, Hamish. Hello. So this is a little bit different. We're talking it is. today. I mean, because this is how I really got into things. So years ago, I, um, I, I was actually flying, doing work, and my father said to me, he goes, you need another string to your bow. And he enrolled me in Manic our tech to do horticulture. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so which led to this. So we're looking at the garden specifically of Russell Page. We are. Now, so around 21, I got given a book because this was clearly where I was headed and um, I loved it. It's called The Gardens of Russell Page. Yes. Um, he's probably. Can you show us? Hang on, let me do it. You for want you. to you're gonna hold Here the book go. for me? I'm going to hold it up like this. Help me describe him. He would be the most famous unknown garden designer that there is out there. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. What do you like about him? I, I like the structure of the gardens yet he doesn't inhibit nature so he brings in low clipped hedges but trees are still allowed to be trees right and he uses a lot of water do you think you know going back to when you first opened that book yep. to today has design of gardens changed much you know I, I was chatting about that earlier on uh, yes certain things have but the thing about Russell Page he did what he wanted to do oh. so he never followed trends he built gardens he liked. Allow me to show you some little pictures, Where's shall I? Where's he from, though, first? Well, he's from England. OK. He passed in 1985, but he basically wrote the, the instructional books for landscape design nice. studies. Have you had this book since 1992? This one we got from a library, because mine's in my lock-up somewhere, oh, okay. which is, um, you know, basically, it's like, I don't okay. know, the TARDIS, anyway, it's gone. Anywho, <laughs> right. show us your fancy gardens. Right, I'm going to show you what I like about Russell Page, OK? okay? So we have things like this. Now, quite simply, he whitewashed apple tree trunks. Oh, that looks cool. Nice and simplistic. Used to whitewash them, actually stop moths getting into them. That was the purpose okay. for it. But I like it. It's something different you can do at home. Yeah, especially against that dark green backdrop. Yeah, so everything was designed to slightly be the opposite. Over here, we have a garden where he's reversed the paths with the grass. So the paths are underneath the trees and the grass forms your pathways. A crazy cat. That, I, I like know. that idea, though. It's, little, it's simple little things. So these are not complex things that you could actually do at home in your own garden. Okay. Next page. I love post-its, don't you? How many books did you have to read, though, to understand that that was your favourite one? This my well, I read this and probably another 20 or so wow. that I went through, and I kept going back to this. He always used water. These are canals. Water mm. does not need to be deep either. We're only allowed to have about a 400 mil pond at mm. home for safety reasons. Right. So you can build something shallow. Most of the um, big English gardens had very shallow ponds. I'm not entirely sure I've got room for a canal at no. my house. No, no, no. <laughs> Clearly they, they were on a different scale to what you or I probably have at home. Yeah. Okay, next picture. T typical okay, nice. suburban garden, might not fit it. This is one. an example of how one uses oh. clipped edging, see the, the larger trees around the outside left to do what they want to do, and still water. That was a big thing about his gardens, was always having water in them to reflect what's around them. That looks beautiful, but to me I see a lot of maintenance. Oh yes, this is when one has a garden staff of 20. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Or like when I was there, a poor student that you can pay next to nothing to trim one plant for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I did my time I at Rousham. Bet you Special. Did. Okay, last picture. Oh, I'm flicking through. They're all so exciting. Aren't they? I know. He did I love that you're so excited by this. I, I, I love this book. It, it inspired me to want to make things. This <gasps> I love. So, Water uh, and trees. I want one. And in this book, this is the I'm big selection of it. Up. It's a simple oval pond. It's mm. quite large, clearly. Once again, money's probably not too much of an object here. True. Sorry, I better tilt it up, hadn't I? And it's the reflection of the trees. And so what you're going to do there is you're going to get seasonal change. So you're going to have the blossoms coming through as well as the orange in the trees as, they, as the leaves turn. So it's going to always be changing as you're going to sit by the pond. You know, that one there is quite reflective of, I guess, a lot of um, big sort of acre gar reflective gardens in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite, quite reflective. I mean, if, if, oh. if you had a lifestyle block, you, yeah, could, yeah. you could obviously, right. e mm. economies of scale, scale it down, do something with yeah. water and plant some trees around it. <laughs> That's the type of garden my mum dreamed of all the time. Maybe for <laughs> you. That's what we all dream of. I'll get you one, but I'll do it like for like, like a little fishbowl sort of oh, size. A one. So maybe it's a little bond size or something. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Hamish. No nice problem. Yeah. You and your lovely book. You can go and sit down and so maybe read that for a bit longer. Um, some inspiration there.